What's up guys, Oscar here with TCG Scrubs and I decided to make a quick little video that uh, a lot of questions have been coming up about and that's going to be the rune deck and kind of how runes work. So we're going to take a look at uh, kind of the functionality of this and uh, but we're going to start off with looking at the ruler. So let's take a little look at the ruler first. So now if you're not familiar with the new rulers for New Valhalla, we'll go ahead and pull two up here. Now you notice there's uh, something different that you don't normally see on some of the older rulers and that's going to be the divinity cost. Divinity shows up as 10 on all the rulers right now. If you don't include the draft rulers, we'll mention that a little bit later. Now, what is Divinity and how exactly does it function? You'll notice Divinity, first of all, is pretty on both sides of the ruler. The number should be the same across the board at 10. And another thing to notate right now is the color identity of your rulers. It's notated here. As you notice, uh, Isis is red and uh, Lich is black, or darkness. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the runes so we can kind of show how these relate to what's printed on the rulers. Now this is actually what a rune deck will look like. It's going to be five cards set to the side. This is kind of like the way the starter deck was set up. I added a couple extra cards in here and switched some things up. But if you guys are picking up the starter deck, one thing you'll notice in those starter decks is you have a basic rune. Now it's notated here by its type, which just says rune. We do have some other types such as chant slash rune and master rune. We'll get to those two last two in here in a second, but let's take a look at this rune for now. Now this rune here is explosion. It's a one cost quick cast rune with divinity of two. Now divinity two is going to come into play with what your ruler showed with divinity of 10. Let's use Isis here as an example. So we have Isis here and she has divinity 10. What this means is I can play runes from my rune deck until the cost of 10 is reached. That doesn't mean I have to reach the 10, but my maximum is 10. Now, how does that kind of play out and what does it matter? Well, let's pull up a couple other runes here and let's just pretend that these all got played. Now, if we add up these totals here, we'll find that my total number of divinity right now is currently 8. You notice each card says divinity 2, 2, 4, 6, 8. My divinity is 8. My ruler has a divinity of 10. So I have two left over to play with, but let's just say I structured my deck, my rune deck in a way that I, I can't reach that cost evenly. Um, pretend that my uh, last rune is, say, this one. And this one has a divinity of 3, which would set me at 11 total. It means I can't play this rune. But if I had another divinity 2 card, I could have. Now in this way, the game kind of starts to balance itself out with the rune deck because you have to be very cautious to how you play your cards or how you build your rune deck. Now just because your divinity and your ruler is 10, it doesn't mean that the rune deck has to apply to that number. Now what does that mean? Let's just say I structured my five rune cards in a way that made the divinity equals up to 15. I don't know if that's possible, but let's just pretend that that's the case. That's a completely legal rune deck. I can have that, but my revealed cards cannot exceed the 10. So therefore I have to be very picky as to which runes I choose to play. Maybe it's very situational based on the uh, matchup I'm against. And I, you know, teched in cards into the rune deck based on what I thought I might be playing. Now, another thing to make sure to keep in mind that you cannot sideboard your rune deck. Now, if you remember Sherry, Sherry allowed us to, she allowed us to have the Grimoire deck, which people were able to side in and out based on their matchups. We cannot do this with the rune deck. Once you create your rune deck, it is locked in. Now, this is a very big deal for when you go to tournaments, because once you fill out your deck list, it is visible there to the judges and staff exactly what you're running. Another thing to keep in mind while we are here at this point in the video, a rune, and as a matter of fact, all the runes, so chant slash rune or even a master rune, are classified as a rune spell. So what does that mean exactly? Well, it does mean it can be canceled. There are quite a few different cancel cards out there existing that say cancel target spell. This would be a target spell. So that you can have a quick cast rune and it would be fair spelled. Or you can have a regular rune that could be you know, stopped by uh, say Gil with his cancel card. Now if you notice, my rune deck is all red. And that's going to be because runes, just the basic type rune, are tied to the color identity of your ruler. Now, like I mentioned earlier, our color identity of our ruler is red, and these runes are all color identity of red. Now, the color identity of a rune is notated here, and let's not get that confused with the cost of the card, which is located up here in the top left corner. Now, let's pretend one of these runes was a free cost rune, and it just said zero in the center with no other cost. That doesn't mean that the rune is a void rune. It just means there was no cost for it, but it still has its 
color attribute notated down here. This is very important to remember as you won't be able to put in those free cost runes into other colored decks unless their identities are matching. Now what exactly helps break the rule of the color identity within the rune deck? You may have seen some of the world streams and been confused. There was quite a few people asking questions about legal rune decks in play. Well, let's take a look at some of the other runes. Uh, for starters, let's take a look at chant slash rune. Now these chant slash rune cards are not color locked. These can be put into any rune deck. So let's just say I have Isis as my red ruler and I wanna run this color chant slash rune here. I can. It's a chant slash rune, so therefore I can actually run any colored chant slash rune I want to. Now the one important thing obviously is when running any kind of chant slash rune into your rune deck, you have to also be able to pay the cost. So if I'm running a mono red uh, Isis deck and I put in a massive growth, I need to have a way to put pay for the blue. This kind of comes in various ways, either one of the idols from uh, back during Rhea Cluster or Maybe I have a stone that somehow produces red and blue. It's, you know, it kind of comes in various ways. Now, realistically, I would probably have like maybe a red, blue Isis deck, uh, which doesn't sound that great, but in this example, so that would be able to play massive growth. Um, otherwise, you need to be careful on what you kind of put in your rune deck as you have to be able to pay that cost. Now, lastly, covering all the types of runes that we have available to the rune deck, I will mention that there is a master rune. Now, master runes are locked into the ruler that is played by name, such as uh, we have Isis and her Isis master rune. Now, if you take a look at the text, it does say that it can only be played if you control Isis on either one of her two sides. Now, while rulers can be sideboarded in and out and the rune deck cannot, you cannot actually run more than one type of master rune. So if I chose to run Isis' Master Rune, I couldn't say run uh, Fuji's Master Rune and have him as a ruler in my sideboard with the intent of like maybe you know sideboarding him in on game two to use his Master Rune. That's not a legal interaction. Instead, it would be just the one locked in Master Rune. Yeah, Fuji can be in the sideboard and swap in, but he wouldn't be able to use the Master Rune at that point. Uh, master Runes are also still going to be considered as a Rune Spell. Matter of fact, all the Rune types are just classified as Rune Spell. I'm not sure if I already went over that, but I just want to make sure I emphasize that. Meaning that, yes, this Master Rune could be cancelled. Alright, now that we've covered quite a bit about Runes, there's just a few more things we need to actually uh, mention that have to interact with the main deck. Now, um, the main type of Rune can only be applied to the Rune deck, while Chant Rune can be applied to the Rune deck, as well as the main deck. The reason why this would be is because it would be treated as a chant spell. So like any other chant you'd normally run in the main deck, you can now run here. Now something to go ahead and make sure to keep in mind is if you run, let's say, one of these sandstorms in your rune deck, your maximum allowed in the main deck will be three. Let's pretend you didn't run the sandstorm in your rune deck, and instead you just choose to run four of them in the main deck. So you're kind of applying the rule of four to these as well, no matter where they're located or how they're split up. Now a chant slash rune coming from the main deck and say going into your hand and then being played still is classified as both a chant and a rune at the same time. Now that's going to be important to notate because Hanzo has a master rune that is a free cost rune that when he activates it, it can cancel a rune spell. Now this will be applied to this chant slash rune you may have played so that can help them preventing you from I don't know, getting advantage. And again, as before, the chant slash rune being played from hand can also be stopped by uh, cancel spells such as Fair Spell and Vanish. Now, when playing a chant rune from hand, which had come from your main deck, you do not worry about the divinity cost. It doesn't apply to your ruler at this point. So if in a situation where you know you had 10 divinity revealed from your rune deck and you played, say, Sandstorm from hand, it doesn't apply to the divinity cost. Instead, it's just being treated as a chant, which enters a chase and then goes directly to your graveyard. Now a chant rune from the rune deck being revealed and resolving does not go into the discard pile. Instead, it just remains in your rune deck revealed because that number will apply to your divinity cost. Now what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and set up a play field here to kind of show an example of how a rune would become revealed from the rune deck. We'll go ahead and set up your basic play field here where your stones go in the top left corner. Your main deck will be going to the top right corner. Your ruler will generally go in the center. Our rune deck will now go into the bottom left corner, and but everybody's going to have their own play style, so just make sure you keep in mind and ask your opponent where everything is. Now, when it comes time to play a rune from the rune deck, you have to make sure you actually have the cost uh, appropriate to pay for the rune, or else you wouldn't be able to activate a rune from the rune deck. Now, this is going to be different from the way Grimoire worked, because in Grimoire, you can actually activate a uh, story chant from the Grimoire deck, not pay the cost, 
the ability would fizzle and you'd move on. Now they've kind of corrected this going into the rune deck so that certain things wouldn't have advantage that required for certain runes, number of runes to be revealed. So now that we have the rune deck, you have to pay the cost once it's revealed. If not, you're unable to play that card. Uh, once a rune is revealed, you will pay the cost of the card and the ability will enter the chase. Now once the ability is re resolved from the chase, it kind of just you know, ceases to exist like any other ability and the rune stays in the rune area. And that's really about it. That's kind of how you'll keep continuing playing. You'll play some cards from hand, you'll play some runes from the rune deck and kind of everything needs to be at the right uh, speed. Of course, there are runes that are at quick cast speed and there's certain abilities that allow runes to be quick cast speed, such as Adam C. Cart's J Ruler side. Other than this, you always make sure you play everything at the correct timing and uh, that's really about it, guys. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below and we'll try to answer them as best as we can. Maybe we'll pin one of the better ones towards the top so that uh, in case there's some maybe critical moment I did miss or maybe a bit of incorrect information, we can you know, have that be brought to everybody's uh, attention. But uh, other than that, uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.